Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. If you like all things true crime, if you like it delivered in a peaceful, tranquil manner, if you like it clear and concise without drama, then I highly recommend you subscribe. And if you like what you hear, please smash the like button. It's a free way you can help. And now, without further ado, let's dig in. It's a sad fact that true crime cases bring out the best and worst of people. Sometimes when a case captures the imaginations of many true crime aficionados, a number of not-so-well-intentioned people turn up on the scene. Unfortunately, the case of missing 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers has seemingly brought out a slew of profiteers, meaning people on social media who aren't simply out to share Sebastian's face and story to help get him found, but rather to seek their own fame and fortune. At this point, it's hard to know who's legit and who's not in Sebastian's case. His biological father, Seth Rogers, now has his own YouTube channel. And during a live he presented the other night with Bullhorn Betty and the dubious PR person, Tony Mathis, Seth shared photos of Sebastian along with his cash app, on heavy rotation in the chat. Some people are upset about this, feeling that Seth is now trying to profit off his missing son. You may recall that Seth's sister, Sarah Swank, set up a GoFundMe for him early on, and $24,719 were raised. I'm not sure how far that amount of cash can go, when it comes to flyers and plastic bracelets to spread word of Sebastian's disappearance. Seems like it should go pretty far, right? Now, because of the stories that YouTuber T-Rev told about Seth, allegedly trying to get him to purchase a pricey firearm for him, meaning for Seth, and rumors that Seth gave a lot of money to T-Rev's girlfriend, allegedly to pay off a debt, I don't know if it was her mortgage or some other bill. Along with Seth seeming to have already maybe burned through the GoFundMe monies, some people are eyeing Seth with suspicion. But Seth did recently undergo surgery, so perhaps he needed the money for that, especially if he's no longer covered by insurance. So there's that whole situation. Honestly, I don't know what's true and what's made up. Then we have the canine handler, Julia Valenti. Valenti, Valenti, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, who many are questioning at this point for various reasons. Julia allegedly failed to turn up to search with YouTuber Terry Lynn after committing to do so. Many people are now questioning whether Valente was ever really in Tennessee searching. And now we find out from J is for Justice that someone sent an email to another YouTuber who I believe goes by Brittany, allegedly, and the person who wrote the email claimed to be Julia's mother, and this so-called mother was saying that Julia went missing in the woods and that a missing persons report was going to be filed. It sounds like all of this was a bunch of baloney. Did you hear that pause there? I wanted to say a bunch of BS without the abbreviation, if you know what I mean. So don't worry, Julia is fine, apparently. J is for justice, was concerned that perhaps this email was sent in a bid to try and destroy Britney's credibility and perhaps to make Julia look more like an authentic canine handler which I think she is a canine handler, but who the heck knows what the email was designed for. And then it sounds like someone was trying to say that YouTuber Terry Lynn was going to plant evidence somewhere, allegedly, which by the way, I do not believe. It's so sad to watch as Sebastian's case descends into a full-blown circus of scary and disturbing clowns. I've said it before and I'll say it again, 
This is turning into Summer Wells 2.0. Wanting to do my own due diligence when it came to Julia Valenti, I contacted one of the canine search companies that she has listed as being her employer on LinkedIn. The owner of the company graciously got back to me and this is what he wrote to me via email. By the way, I asked him if he knew Julia Valenti and if she ever worked for him. Okay, so with that said, let me read the email. First, yes, we know Julia, aka Jules. Jules has performed two narcotics searches for us quite a while ago. Let me be clear. Jules does not work for Scentworks Canine anymore, and her LinkedIn account listing us is being addressed. Our company utilizes 1099 contractors, so she was never an employee of our company. Some of the conversations and texts via her work history and statements she made to myself and my co-owner came into question. Therefore, we decided to never use her again. These statements are private between her and my coworker, and I hope you understand. That being said, our company relies on transparency and honesty, but we aren't going to provide too much information, especially via email, end quote. Okay, I'm not reading you the entire email because there were a few other things said that I don't want to share because they truly are of a private nature. The bottom line with that is that Julia Valente is indeed a canine dog handler, I think, but perhaps the breadth of her experience is not as great as we've been led to believe. I'm going to say allegedly, be well, because I want to cover my own arse. J is for justice. Also questioned Valenti's mental health. I don't want to go there. <laughs> How can we possibly vet that? That's private information. To me, what this highlights is that we have to vet the people associated with these cases. It's so easy to buy into someone who comes across as knowledgeable and well-spoken. I thought Tony Mathis sounded legit in the beginning, and I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. Now I question that initial assessment. I've also felt that Valenti came across as an experienced canine handler who legitimately wanted to help find Sebastian Rogers. But in a hot minute, she had her own YouTube channel and suddenly was doing lives every night. Note to self, vet people first. Don't automatically assume everyone has good intentions. The most tragic part of all of this is that Sebastian is getting lost and forgotten no pun intended, by the way. YouTubers can help an unsolved case remain in the public eye. When we do that, we're helping. But if we become enmeshed in drama that overtakes the victim and his or her story, then we're not helping. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories.